was nice, but what do you think you're doing, man? I, I'm just trying to change things up, do something different, have oh, a look. Oh, no, 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 no. It's time to get back to the unboxing. But, I, I mean, it... Don't you make me whip out the sword. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, everybody, Bam Collectibles here, back for another statue unboxing review for you. Today will be super special because it will be the first time that we're going to be debuting a Demon Slayer statue on the channel. Later on, I will need your help in deciding what Demon Slayer statue to unbox next, so stick around to check it out. Magic Cube is the name of the studio that came out with this statue. You can see there's 520 of them made, and every bit of them sold out. I know this actually went up in price very shortly after it was released, but they're doing such a good job, and the reason why the price is increasing is because they've really committed themselves. I think they're up to five or six characters at this time. The base looks nice and simple. We have some rock, some moss textured on there, and then we have some cherry blossoms. All throughout you'll see these little crevices here where later effect pieces will be keyed into. Uh, but naturally it doesn't look too great because it's got all those crevices all throughout. On the back you have a button to turn on the LEDs, and then we have right there it'll be powered by a micro USB as well. As we begin to build this statue together, you're going to see this is what I would deem a triple threat kind of statue. What I mean by that is it's got great character representation, it's dynamic, it actually looks like a work of art, uh, there's lots of nice effects, there's LEDs to go with it, there's just so much going on for this statue and it's also just a nice balanced looking piece. These red translucent resin pieces are what I believe to be uh, Nezuko's blood or maybe her ability to manipulate that. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on those. These are the two largest effect pieces here, and they're kind of the backbone to support several other different pieces that we'll be installing later. I do love the fact that there is some texturing on there. There isn't just a smooth texture. There's also what looks to be like a rough point, but it gives it a little bit more character for it being just a boring piece of a red resin. Earlier I had said that those pink flowers remind me of a cherry blossom, but honestly, I, I have no idea you know, what it could be. This could be a Japanese maple tree, and so I'm just saying cherry blossom because anytime I see lots of pink flowers, I think that. On the bottom of this piece here, we'll see that's actually a plug that will allow the electronics to travel up to the very top here, and later on we're going to be connecting something that lights up that's very gorgeous. Uh, so cool engineering, the way that they did that. All throughout the tree, we'll see these holes where we'll later fit some other pieces on there. These will also house things because they look a bit unnatural for a tree. They don't look like branches at all. But gorgeous tree, great paint application on this one as well. And uh, I just love how this is going to be kind of the centerpiece, the backbone of the statue. Now is your chance to vote below. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a Tundra statue next, which is going to be extremely epic and dynamic, or would you love to see it Magic Cube's Shinobu? Uh, so your choice, let me know. I can't wait to do either one. The flowers that they sculpted look fantastic, and they further add to the fact that this feels like an artistic statue. Now those holes on the bottom will attach to those more unnatural looking pieces that are sticking out of the branches. Here is the largest batch of flowers. I figured since this is more detailed and intricate, I'll show this one off real quick. Uh, this one actually attaches with two parts, one on a smaller branch and then on that thick piece. Next up, we have the box that Tanjiro carries that Nezuko sits in during the date. Karama, get, come on. This is not even a Naruto video. Get out of here. So we have the box here and it looks fantastic. Great texturing the wood, it looks realistic. And uh, just a nice touch. This is actually going to be the backbone that holds up Nezuko as we attach her later on. You can see that's why this notch is very thick and that steel rod is very strong. Before we install that, I'm going to go ahead and put in the remaining effect pieces. I actually have to put on that small one before I put the box or it won't go on. Spoiler alert for anybody who only watches the anime, the form of Nezuko coming up is not something that's been showcased yet. So you might want to skip over and please don't blame me if uh, something is spoiled. The form that she's going to be taking on here is, I guess, her full demon transformation. Some vine-like tattoos end up appearing all throughout her body, which they did well at sculpting that on there. 
Those vine tattoos are likely paint stickers. And if we flip this around to the back, the texturing paint application looks fantastic on this. You can see how the light just reflects off it. They did sculpt some underwear there on the bottom. And if you're wondering why this is only half of her body, they sculpted this in three different parts here. And that's how the torso will connect to the rest. For the rest of the upper torso, basically everything that is skin was sculpted separately. So we have each arm sculpted, and then we have the chest and head are all one piece. Now to address the elephant in the room, her clothes are a bit revealing. Thankfully, there is a purpose behind it, which I can appreciate. The fact that when she shrinks and grows, it's the same clothes. So naturally, as she's going to be larger in this form, it doesn't cover up as much. So it's a bit revealing. One thing I want to point out also is the positioning of the hands and how they were sculpted. They look extremely rabid and as if she has lost control of herself. Here's a close up of those paint stickers as well. Each hand does have a magnet at the very end that connects to the part of the clothing that we'll see in just a sec. It's really cool how she is in somewhat of a dynamic pose. It's not overly dynamic, but it's not static feeling as if she's just standing there. So I think that they had a perfect balance between a static and dynamic pose. Definitely the coolest piece so far. There's so much detail packed in to just this head sculpt. The hair looks gorgeous with that blending between the black and the orange. The actual hair is quite flexible. I'm not sure if it's made of resin or a type of PVC, but I appreciate the fact that it doesn't break easy. We can see that horn that's forming on the left side of her head, or I guess right if you want to be politically correct. And then we have some of the veins that are popping out. You can see there the breasts have a little bit of the vine-like tattoo that's starting to form. What's cool about the way that they sculpted it with the skin being separate is it does sit in there pretty flush to where it looks naturally like one piece. Now y'all leave me alone in the comment sections. I have to push these a little bit to get them to sit flush. Now on to the last piece, what I like to call the cherry on the icing of the cake, because as if this statue wasn't cool enough, it included this large moon, which we have a piece up top of the blossom that is sculpted separately. And then the actual moonlight texture, it's kind of hollow feeling inside. There's some LEDs that are gonna be inside of there. So I'm not sure how it looks inside, uh, but it is gorgeous feeling and pretty lightweight. Up top, you'll see that little hole right there. We do have some five final pieces that we'll be attaching after we light this up. In order to power this statue, they included a small micro USB cord. Now this one's too short for most statues that I use. In my description section of every single video I have is an Amazon store of my go-to items if you wanna pick stuff up. I actually use a 10 foot cord for these. They're actually pretty cheap, but check that out if you haven't seen those links. This is very unique. I've never seen this before, but Magic Cube made the actual remote that turns the LEDs on and off the addition size as well. So you can see the number that's on there. It also comes with this acrylic stand that you could sit it on next to the statue. So it's great. Instead of an addition size plaque, it's a remote and a plaque at the same time, but very ingenious of them. The moon looks fantastic. It is super bright and you can tell it's kind of a pure white coloration in there, but it really brings that statue to life, especially at nighttime if you have it sitting in your room. These are also included with the statue. These are five different lanterns. The inside of them are hollow and that is because it's, they actually included some, I would say like gimmicky type of LED lights to light them up. They're not plugged in electronically. You'll see here, these are the LED fixtures and also they included some small bags with the actual batteries in there. So you install the batteries inside of those units and then you take those units and put them inside the lanterns and we'll see how they look. After sitting down with these for a little while, I actually have no idea how to turn them on except for smacking them. I, you know, just the only way that I figured out, once I stick them in here, if I tap the lantern, it tends to turn on and off, but that's what they look like and that's how I only figured out how to turn them on. Really cool looking and of course my only complaint would be the fact that they're not plugged in electronically, that you do have to manually turn these on and off. Now, they're probably not something that I would use consistently with the statue. It's really great for a showcase and for taking some pictures, but after that I either keep them turned off or take the batteries out altogether. The statue looks absolutely stunning once you turn all the lights off again. I said this is an artistic type of statue, and I really mean it. It looks fantastic when you have everything assembled, all the LEDs on. Such a great job by Magic Cube. 
Be sure to vote below in the comment sections on if you're looking to see Tanjiro next or Shinobu. Both will be showcased in the future, but you have the power to decide on who's going to be coming first. If you enjoyed this unboxing, please do hit a like on there. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I want to encourage you to do so. Click that notification bell so you are aware when my videos drop. I really was excited to showcase this today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, for now, I will see you in the next video. As always, everybody, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out. Suyoku Narewu Ryu wo shita Boku wo Surete Susume